see where I am right now actually. I do have a stopover of incredible seven hours here in Jakarta and in Nisha. And I have arrived an hour ago, so it's still six more hours to go. So welcome to The Human Project, your podcast for inspiring stories. I'm Karina Rosa Falkenberg, and as you can hear, my voice seems to fade out a bit, right? But no worries, because I have a beautiful guest sitting next to me, and I think she can take over when I'm out of, out of voice. Hi, Emma. Hello, how are you going? <laughs> Emma just said I remind her of your of your cousin, of her cousin. So what's that about? Just <laughs> funny, easygoing. <laughs> you think and you have no idea. Talk to my close friends. <laughs> um, so Emma, thank you so much. We we're we are sitting here as you are waiting as well. You're we are going back to Australia as you're Australian. And I just said, are you up to for a podcast? And your response was a smiling, yes, I'm a curious adventurer. <laughs> so maybe you would like to tell us in three points, who are you? I'm, I'm Emma, I'm adventurous and I love exploring and doing new things and getting out of my comfort zone, meeting new people and going to new destinations. Wow, well summarized. <laughs> I was coming in, I think it was almost the last one, uh, reaching the plane and then um, we had the pleasure to travel together from Bali here to Jakarta and normally it's me who speak first to the neighbors and this time uh, you have reached out and you asked me a question which I really <laughs> appreciate it. So this is why we have decided to spend some time here together. So Emma, I learned that you are 22, you're from Australia and I would like to dig in of what you said before because you have a very interesting background and you have a recurring story in a way because your mom went to a similar situation situation in her life yes you are nodding what's it what's what what do i mean right now <laughs> um i'm currently in a relationship with a man from indonesia and we've been together for, for three years now um And I guess sometimes people try to change how you feel or change your mind because they feel it's not the right thing to do because of the background when they don't really know much about the person. So yeah, my mum's in a my mum was in a similar situation. She obviously met my dad, and my dad is from East Africa. So he's, I mean, not like the same as my partner right now, but still coming from a country that's not a Western country or first world country. Um, and they managed to get married and have my brother and I live a very happy life. So I kind of just look at them and think, well, if they can do it, we can do the same. And I don't think about what the others say because they just have opinions that are invalid for me. What kind of opinions were you, were you, are you facing when it comes to you and your boyfriend? Uh, firstly, the big one is being from Indonesia. So people automatically think Indonesia third world country means everyone here is um, poor when they've never been here they've never experienced the culture and what it's like so that's not true um, secondly the looks everyone thinks that I need to find someone who's better looking I also better looking yes they don't think that I don't think I'm too beautiful for him which I don't think is true I think you should be with someone for how they treat you how they are towards you your family how they respect you not go not not go to be with someone because of their looks or how big their bank account is um and thirdly it's the i guess the stereotyping of indonesians don't have money so why would you want to be with someone who's poor mm -hmm. um so uh, now i have to ask what what is his financial background i mean i can see now your classes can i say that more Jacobs. your beautiful handbag <laughs> you name it It's Shivanji, right? Right. Yes, I can see the jewelry here. I think you said like your parents are successful bankers, yes. right? So what is the um, social and financial background of your of your boyfriend? Yeah, um, financially for a, I guess as people would say, an Indonesian, he's quite stable. He does work, he's got his own um, business. He does have a lot of um, property that is coming up as well. Um, and his social background, he comes from a very, I guess, homely kind of uh, fa uh, family. Parents both work, his dad has a business and works in the government. 
his two brothers still go to school and uni uh, and and um, university. Um, Would you say that this family is having the same kind of financial background as you have? I wouldn't say the same in terms of liquid cash, mm -hmm. but they do have a lot, like they're, they're asset rich, mm -hmm. not so much liquid rich. Um, Now talks the daughter of a banker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, um, to me that doesn't make a big deal because I feel like if someone already has the drive to go and start their own business, mm -hmm. someone has the drive to move countries to be successful for themselves, their future mm. wife and their family. To me, it doesn't really make a big difference. Mm. I find that people go off money, but money helps with in everything, but it doesn't make a relationship. I had a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And you said that your dad is from the eastern part of Africa. In Mauritius. From where? In Mauritius. Uh, because this is when I said just before, when I got my, my luggage, I said, wow, this explains the beautiful skin color you have <laughs> because it's... Um, How would you describe your own skin color? It's very special, you know? It's uh, uh, like a tanned complexion. People yeah. think I'm Hispanic, yes. European. Um, yeah, no, like an, an olive complexion, darker when I get tanned in the sun. Uh, it's really very nice. Let me say so from a pale <laughs> one. So you have ambitious plans. You're 22 and you want to get married to the man you love. And while I was sitting with you on the plane, I could see how much you really love him. Like, <laughs> I think you mentioned like three or four times, like when he's not going to have uh, the visa to, to see you in Australia, you're going back to Indonesia because you want to be with him. So you have given yourself two months to go back. <laughs> And he's the man you want to marry. And when he said you want to get married, I said, wow, but you're just 22. So how is it that you're sure you want to marry him? What makes him so special? What makes the love you're sharing so special? I don't think I really look at it as how old I am. I look at it as, first of all, how we, how we are together, how we communicate, um, how we are when we're actually being together in the same country. Um, and also how we are as a couple. So even when we're apart, we always communicate. We always know like what we're doing or where we are. When we're together, we already, we already like plan what we want to do. We already know what we want to start, how we want to build um, the pathway that we, that the, um, the pathway that we, that we uh, want to take. And from what we already plan and what we've already started and what we're doing, I feel like It's just like the right way to go. Oh, I can see your face <laughs> now. <laughs> it's so convinced. It's full of power. Yeah. So what kind of plans do you have? Concrete plans? Yeah. So firstly, we want to build the two, bu the two businesses that we've started um, together and also the property. What are they about? Yeah. So a uh, fashion online store, watches and footwear. And then another one is a health and wellness um, online store. Why not computer spare parts? Uh, fashion, we both like ah, jewelry. Look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then health and fitness is something that we're both um, passionate about. So we found we do something that we like and something that can also give people a solution. Um, and also with the uh, with um, property in Indonesia, in Australia as well. And we also both want to have kids. Mm, how many kids do you want to have, my dear? Uh, I would say three. If I only had two, I'd be happy, but I'd say three. Mm. Yeah. How does it look like a happy family life for you? What is, uh, what is daily life like? Um, I'd say, the, first of all, the mother and the father having a good relationship between themselves because that also does reflect a lot on how the kids behave mm. and how the kids like, have a foundation for their future as well. Um, I also want to ha live a family life where we go away a lot, like new adventures, new countries, doing new things together, not just staying in one place the whole time. You said you traveled also to Europe already, yeah. right? Which yeah. places do you know in Europe? Uh, I went to France and Italy. I've done Dubai. Um, and then I've done a lot of Southeast Asia. Mm. So Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. What is your kind of travel style then? Is it like I see you today very elegant or can you be like 
I mean, you see me today, I'm wearing just sneakers <laughs> and today is like uh, an easy travel day for me. So what is, what is your travel style like when you go to Europe? Um, it's a bit of And both. I say this because when I go to Paris, I can be so different. In Paris, <laughs> I'm like, that was très chic. <laughs> um, I do both. So I, I kind of just dress however I feel is appropriate and right. Usually, I tend to wear heels in the airport because it's the most bulkiest thing that I have. <laughs> and <laughs> you tend to wear heels in airports, like, like the wedges. Ah, yeah. So that that that, that and they seem to be. They, you said they are comfortable. Yeah, they yeah. don't seem to be comfortable, but you say they are. Yeah, they're comfortable. Um, and then uh, when I'm away, I'm quite adventurous. So I do go, like, um, in the water. I do go in like the rainforest and all that kind of stuff. So I can get dirty, but I can also look very nice. <laughs> You said before, and maybe this is also related to the comfort zone, leaving the comfort zone, you said. And you said, um, because you told me something about your family background and your environment there, that again, some people say, is he pretty enough, your fiancé? Is it really what you want in Indonesia? Huh? It's a uh, third world country still. Um, so um, you said like, yes, but I am an, I'm a curious woman. I go for risk. And um, you said... Uh, I'm a bit like my grandma. Yeah. How was your grandma? Yeah, so my late grandmother, my mum's mum, she was also quite adventurous. We just like um, get up and go. Nothing really held her back or back or stopped her, and I'm and I'm the same. I and feel she was married. Yes, she was to an Italian man as well. Ah, because your mum, no, your mum is Italian. Yeah. And si. ah. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of the same. I don't really. I well, I haven't let people's opinions influence what I do or my decisions I came here to work um, a lot of people thought that it was the wrong thing to do but I did it because I wanted to and it's something that I'm passionate about to travel work meet new people so I'm not going to change where is this willingness this dedication coming from <laughs> I mean where is this I do what I want was it something where again you said your, your grandma was a bit similar Was she raising you or was it like you just got that idea from her because she was your role model? What what were parts what parts played a role? Uh, my grandmother was in my life for nearly 18 years. Um, we were very close so I, I did learn a lot from her. I guess the willingness for me to just do things just comes from myself I guess. I'm not really one to well I am When I, <laughs> What comes now? <laughs> when I want to do something, it's very hard for someone to change my mind. Um, I'm not setting my ways in terms that I don't change or I don't change what I do for someone. I'm not like that. But when I want to get up and go, whether it be for work or for travel or for an adventure, I would do it because I don't want to have a regret in 10 years' time when I have kids. Oh, I should have gone there to work or I should have gone there mm. before kids. Um It's something that I have always wanted to do. I've never wanted to be in Australia forever. And right now I don't see myself being there year in, year out. But maybe when I do have kids and obviously then school comes and all that kind of stuff, I will settle down. But at 23 years old, I don't feel the need to... Are you 23, not 22? Yeah, I'm no, sorry. at 23. <laughs> I don't feel the need that I've got to do everything right away. Um, especially now we're in a world where things are always um, changing so I feel like if this is what I want to do I'll do it yeah I mean we both lived on Bali and uh, Bali is a melting pot of different personalities that share this what you just said I think yeah. and I also enjoy like traveling it's yeah. for me one of the most inspirational things ever because you can learn so much independently where you are in the Philippines with the rice farmers I used to live there with them It's so enriching, you learn so much. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be flexible in your mind. That's right. And you have to face fear because everywhere are risks. So you have to do, you have to somehow find your way around, that's right? Thing. Yeah. That's another thing. A lot of people didn't want me to come here because of the risk that is involved. Obviously, there is a risk being here and it's a risk that I've seen over the past four years of me coming back and forth. But I don't feel that I should stop or I should be stopped because... You can face this risk no matter where you are in the world. Mm. Um, so that's why I also just feel like 
do what you want be where you want to be with caution of course and don't do things that would get you in trouble or do things that would harm yourself but I feel like if you're taking the right steps you're precautious about everything I don't see why something would go wrong for you it's about finding the right balance right That's and right. I think as well like for me it's also part of the right mindset because if you have fear of something I, I, I'm sure you attract it to a certain degree yeah. yes I feel like what you feel and what you attract just comes to you if you feel like everything is just going to turn bad and be a scary place you're going to go there and you're just going to be scared the whole time so a part of your brain will just block out what could be such a wonderful thing for you because you've just made yourself already feel that it's fearless mm -hmm. and I don't feel like people should be a bit more open-minded about these things have fear if that's what something that you have to have as like a guard um but be fearless in the sense that nothing's going to happen to you if you attract the good vibes if you got if you're going to go out there and just attract all the bad that happens there's just no point in being adventurous like i am <laughs> what was the last situation you were really fearful I wouldn't say I was really fearful, but I would say a part of me was a little bit scared was when there was an incident that happened in Indonesia when I was here. And I wasn't scared to the fact that something was going to ha happen to me. I was just scared if it ended up in Bali. Um, but I wouldn't say I've been fearful about anything. I only... I'm not, I'm not scared, but I just don't like leaving my partner because of just the fact that you don't know when you can see them especially the last 12 months but I wouldn't say that I'm scared of anything when I'm going to new places what do you do when you find yourself I think this is a scenario a lot of women can relate to in the middle of a dark street you don't know where to go is it left right straight so you have to go back what do you do to calm your mind or is your mind already calm because you know 99% 99.9% will be fine. Yeah. So how do you how do you approach? Uh, what is your approach in that situation? Sure. Um, if I'm in a place like Indonesia, for example, I've been here multiple times, so I know my way around, and I know what streets to go down where there is people. I don't tend to go down a dark street or an alleyway by mm -hmm. myself. However, I have ended up in one which was just I just took a wrong turn. Um, I guess. Just staying calm. There's, I, I wouldn't. If, if you make yourself scared, you'll automatically just like start to profusely sweat. You'll start to feel anxious. You'll start to think that someone is behind you. So just to remain calm, just like walk until you see. I don't know, like light or something, mm -hmm. uh, a shop, a restaurant. Um, a lot of us all have phones now. Usually you get internet no matter where you are. So your phone, but. Yeah, I just, I just find that if, you, if you're in a new country, just learn the map, learn the locations first. If you are by yourself and you are female, of course, be in a place where there's a lot of people. It's just safer. I mean, it's, it has the same for men too. Um, but I wouldn't go down dark streets if I was alone. But if I did end up down one, just remain calm and just see if you can find something that is a public attraction, I guess. So, yeah. Oh, good advice. <laughs> and what would be your recommendation to all those people that are right now listening and they ask, how can I become a worldwide traveler, fearless, courageous, um, and just make it? Be because sometimes people are sitting and they love to sit on their sofas and they dream about that. Yeah, and they say maybe, I do it later. Yeah, first I have to work. I have to have a, a very, very 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 rich bank account at least where i can really sleep easily before i start traveling the world or i do have kids right now i cannot do or uh, next month because there's something else i need to do it before so what would be your advice to those people who have those dreams about starting going out yeah what would you say to make it easier for them so they can find their move their movement just go for it find Uh, a country or find a place wherever it is in the world that you really want to go or you want to be find out first of all like what the accommodation is like how much you have to spend kind of I don't say budget everything but just get like a brief idea of how much you will need um, 
and just go because you regret it if you don't go and if you don't do it now because you're finding an excuse you're always going to find an excuse to not go um there's nothing nothing holds people back besides themselves and their mind so if you want to go somewhere but you but you're not sure or you want to wait six months you're not going to go in six months because your mind's already telling you that you're not prepared to go or that you shouldn't go um just get up and just go don't worry about what people say people are going to have their opinions about what you do where you go who you're with why you do things it's just it's society and they're not no one they're not going to change no matter how bad you want something they're not going to change so just you focus on yourself and do what you want get the drive within yourself because if you don't have the drive within yourself to do something no one else can give you the drive if you if you really want something you'll you'll find a way to do, um to do that whether it be working for six months and saving and then going or packing up and selling your stuff and then go just go for it people are going to say to you you can't make um make an income online you can't make an income in another country going to a third world country is bad just just nod your head say yes and just go for it because i because i did it because i did it and i have not looked back and i won't look back and i will continue to do it um until i am 100% settled down because it's like the best thing that i've ever done you it's educational you learn a lot you you grow as a person because you're first you're out of your comfort zone secondly you're in a new culture a new environment new languages new way of life you meet new people so you make friends from different countries you make local friends it it's educational and you grow as a person you don't have to go to university to learn about these things you can just grow and learn so much from being in another country with different people Emma I cannot add anything <laughs> neither do I right now have any further questions this was amazing it was like a power talk <laughs> amazing thank you so much no worries any time <laughs> I enjoyed it it was good Thank you so much. So dear listeners, here we are sitting. We are still have a couple of hours ahead of us and I'm sure we can find subjects to talk about. So if you do enjoy the podcast, make sure to subscribe and to review. I really look forward to each review of you. Emma, do you have anything like to add or do you have any homepage? I don't know. Now is your 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 chance. Uh like subscribe because it's a great podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, let me kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. See you soon for the next The Human Project, your podcast for inspiring stories. Keep on shining. Much love today from Jakarta. <laughs>